Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi. Today we discuss another physiological process and this is active transport. So far we have discussed diffusion and osmosis as physiological processes by which uh, materials move in and out of the cells. Uh, today we are going to discuss active transport and this is the movement of particles from a region of low concentration to a region of high concentration against a concentration gradient. So in this case uh, we are saying that uh, uh, particles can move from a low concentration to a high concentration. And that's what we are calling against a concentration gradient. And this process uh, requires energy and hence the term active transport is a process that consumes energy. So you can see that uh, this is movement of particles against a concentration gradient against a concentration gradient with the utilization of energy. So it is believed that uh, for the particles to move against a concentration gradient with the utilization energy, there are some carrier, there are some carriers that are required to carry these particles across the, uh, the cell membrane of plant cells or animal cells. So in this case we find that uh, a lot of energy is spent to make sure that these particles move against a concentration uh, gradient. So you can say that uh, it is believed that carriers combine with the particles and move them across the cell membrane. So we're going to next look at what are some of the, uh, the factors affecting active transport, factors that affect active transport. And the first thing is to know that uh, active transport is a process that consumes energy or utilizes energy. And therefore any process that interferes with respiration, that is the energy production within the cells, will also affect active transport. So you can say that any factor that interferes with respiration, that is energy production in the cells, will also interfere or will also affect active transport. So these factors include we have A, the oxygen concentration C, 
substrate concentration the presence of inhibitors pH so all those factors they will affect uh, the rate of active transport and therefore uh, they affect the rate of respiration or energy production within the cells and therefore they will also affect they will also affect the rate of active transport of course energy uh, of course uh, oxygen concentration determines how much energy is produced the substrate being broken down uh, the presence of uh, inhibitors which tend to interfere with the functioning of the enzymes and also the pH not forgetting also the temperature lastly we look at the role of the role of active transport role of active transport in living organisms in other words we are asking ourselves how is active transport important in living organisms and uh, number one uh, we have absorption of mineral salts from the soil by plants so plants will absorb uh, mineral salts from the soil uh, by active transport absorption of digested food materials from the small intestines or from the ileum of mammals A removal of excretory products removal of excretory products in living organisms reabsorption of useful substances in the kidney tubules so all those are processes that involve active transport they are processes by which uh, the particles or the molecules move against a concentration uh, gradient absorption of mineral salts from the soil by plants absorption of digested food materials from the ileum removal of excretory products in living organisms and reabsorption of useful substances in the kidney uh, tubules so the first question in the assignment define the term active transport to state and explain four factors that affect active transport and three state three roles of active transport in living organisms so our lesson will end there and that marks the end of the topic of cell physiology uh, we shall meet another time in a different topic goodbye <laughs>